By watching this tutorial, you're going to learn all about Google Classroom. And what is Google Classroom? It's a wonderful service that's available to anyone that has a Google Apps for Education account, as it says here. And uh, that would be people, especially teachers and students who are at a school that has been set up with a Google Apps for Education instance or account. That probably will have to have been done by the school administrator or the IT person at your school or district, but they set up a Google Apps for Education account, they enable Google Classroom, and then you are able to set up a classroom, a virtual classroom for you and your students. And you can use that virtual classroom to assign work to your students and then the students can receive that work, they can work on it, they can submit it back to you, and then you can look at their work, review it, you can grade it, evaluate it and send it back to them and so it's really a wonderful service and it does more than what I've just described you can do announcements and some other things as well so let's take a look at Google Classroom first thing I want to show is how to access Google Classroom what you would do especially the first time that you use Google Classroom is you would go to the internet open up a web browser and then just go to classroom.google.com and hopefully it will recognize you. If not, you need to make sure that you're signed in to your school account. And by that I mean your school Google account. So here in the upper right corner, if you click on this link, or if you look at the link here in the upper right, and you don't see your school email address that's associated with your school Google account, then you need to sign out, you need to log out, and get signed in with your school Google account. Okay, once you've done that, you should be able to create some classes and you can see here I've already created three classes but I'll show you how to create another one up here in the upper right corner you can just click the plus sign and either join somebody else's class maybe you're gonna co-teach a class and another teacher has already set up a class that you want to join you could do that or you could create your own class from scratch so I'll click that to create my own class from scratch and this is gonna be a language arts class so I just type that in language arts and then what section is it going to be and you can use section however makes sense to you but for me I consider it to be the class period okay so the class itself is language arts but this is fifth period and then I'll click create it takes a little while to actually create the class but there it is this is my language arts fifth period virtual class so now, at any time, I can go back to my home page in Google Classroom by clicking this menu in the upper left corner. I can click Home, and I can see all of the different classes that I've made. So I would encourage you to take the time now to click this plus sign and add a classroom for each of your real class periods that you teach and each subject that you teach. Once you've done that, you can then get inside that class and do some exciting things. So I'm going to pull up this Spanish 1 class, first period, and you can see at the top here it recognizes who I am and it says what class it is, what period or section, and you'll notice that uh, we have three different sections of this classroom. We have the stream, the students page, and the about page. Now this is from the teacher's perspective, keep that in mind. But here in the stream, this is basically like what you see on a Facebook wall, except it's for education. So here we have a space in which I can post announcements and I can assign work to the students. And this all shows up on this wall or stream in this case and the students will be able to see that. So you can see I've made an announcement that says welcome to Spanish 1 and this is something that all of the students would see. You can see I've also assigned some work and it tells me how many have done the work and how many have not done the work. You can see I don't have a huge class right now. Now down here is a Google Doc worksheet or you know assignment that I have sent out to the students and that is part of this assignment here. So let's look at all the different things you can do with this Google Classroom. So let's start with just some of the superficial things that you can do to make this space your own, to make it look like you want it to look. So here at the right side of the page you'll notice that you can upload a photo or you can select a theme. I'm going to click select a theme and it brings up some patterns and some images and colors that you can use to be the background for your Google Classroom. So I kind of like the look of this 
So I'm going to click on that picture there and click Select Class Theme. And now I've got the look that I want for my classroom. If you would like to upload your own photo, you can do that. You can select Upload Photo and the photo will become the backdrop instead of you know the pre-made themes that Google provides. Okay, so that may be superficial, but it is a fun way to make this your own space and to make it look the way you want it to look. Next up, before you start sending out announcements and assignments, I really suggest that you start out on the right side here where it says About. If you click on About, it gives you the opportunity to title this class. So I can go in and I can put in uh, a title if I would like. I can put in a class description and if I want to I could put in a room number and you know this is optional you don't have to do those things and then notice this here I have a Google Drive folder that was created in my Google Drive and has been added to this class and so the students will be able to click on that and access what's in that folder so it's a great way to provide materials to your students now the way you can add more materials for the students to be able to access is just down here at the bottom of the page. You can click Add Materials, put in a title. So this could be my syllabus or my class calendar or whatever you want it to be. It could be required materials for the class. Whatever you want to use this for, you can. And so I'm just going to go with Syllabus. And then notice there's several different ways that I can include this syllabus with the course. I could attach it just by clicking Upload. I could select files or drag them to attach them. I could access my Google Drive directly just by clicking my drive and it brings up a list of documents that I've created in the past. Maybe I've made the syllabus already. I could pull it in from my Google Drive. And I have another video that will go through Google Drive with you. If you need a review of how that works, watch my other video. So that's one way that you could get a syllabus or a list of required materials into your Google Classroom. Just attach them. Or you could go directly to your Google Drive. I know you can do that by attaching as well, but this is a more direct method. Just click Attach Google Drive Item and it takes you to your Google Drive stuff. You could also include a YouTube video. Now in this case that doesn't make a lot of sense for a syllabus, but maybe you make a welcome video, upload it to YouTube, and then you can click to search you could put in the URL if you know the exact URL of your video and it'll bring the video in. So you could use that for a welcome video or it doesn't have to be a welcome video. It could be something else. You could include uh, a video that goes with the topic of your class. But remember, we are on the about page. So this isn't just weekly course materials. These are items and materials that are going to be useful throughout the class. And then the fourth method for including materials in this area is through a link. You could just click, put in the link, and it would add a course link basically to the About page. So it's important, I feel, to do some things here on the About page. You know, some sort of welcome to your students, uh, a title, and then some basic materials that they will need throughout the course. Now also on this same About page, notice that it does list who the teachers are. In this case, it's just me. But underneath that, I could click the link to invite another teacher. Once you click it, just select the person that you would like to invite, click Next, and they will be invited to help you teach this course. All right, so that's the About page. I'm going to click now on Stream again. And so let's say I've set it up with my materials, my syllabus, some other things on the About page that the students will need. The school year starts or the class begins, and it's time now to actually teach and assign and do some things like that. So let's look first at how to do an announcement. Here on the stream page, all I have to do as the teacher is go in and at the top here where it says share with your class, I just click and I type in the message that I want to send. So there's my announcement that I would like to send to the students in this class. Notice, similarly to my About page where I included materials, I can also include materials with my announcement. I could attach, I could use Google Drive, put in a video or a link to go with this announcement. Now notice that by default it wants to announce this just to my Spanish 1 first period class, which makes sense because that's what I'm in. I'm working in my Spanish 1 first period class. So that's the default. 
But what if this test that's coming up or this field trip that's coming up is something that all Spanish 1 students are going to do? You can just click here on this drop down arrow and you could select all of the students and all of the classes that this is applicable to. Once you've done that, just click post. If you're not quite ready to post, you can click this arrow here and save a draft. But notice that it, it almost constantly saves the draft anyway. But I'll just click post and this is sent out to my students and they can see it here on the stream page. So making an announcement is really easy. What about assignments though? If you click on assignment, you're going to see that this is so similar to everything else I've been showing you on the about page with the materials, on the stream page with announcements. But in this case, you just go in and you title the assignment and then I can put in a description here if I would like and a due date. So this is one of the wonderful things about Google Classroom is you can have specified due dates on these documents. So this is better than just using Google Drive and creating documents and sharing them with students. This makes it so that there's a due date and it just has all of these helpful things around the document that make it much easier for you to teach your students. So let's say the assignment is due on the 21st of August. I just select that. I can add a time if I want to, that's optional, but you could say by 11.59 p.m. you have to get this turned in. We still have our same four options for adding content along with the assignment, but let me just point out how convenient this is to be able to, yes, attach a YouTube video, that would be great to go with this assignment. Yes, you can attach a link or just attach a document that's on your computer using this symbol here, but my favorite is attach Google Drive item. You can just click that symbol and then select from your drive the specific document that you want the students to work on. And maybe this is the assignment itself or maybe it's help materials, but you just select what you need, click add, and it will add that document to your assignment that you're assigning out to the students. What if I need two documents? That's okay. I can just click and select another document to add in. So once your assignment is set up the way you want it to be, you simply click assign and this assignment will be sent out to the students and it's assigned to them. Now notice the due date is printed right here at the top. It tells me how many people have done the work, how many people have not done the work, and you can click on that to get an exact list of who they are that haven't done the work and who has done the work. Notice that you can also make comments underneath about the assignment if you need to do that. Okay. So that's really most of what you need to know about Google Classroom. On this stream page, I do want you to know that there are some options along the left side. Notice that it tells me what's coming up due in the near future. It also has some options for showing deleted items. You could turn that on if you want to. I don't recommend that necessarily. And then here is a class code. Now this is important. This is how students can join your class. And so you would need to publicize this class code, maybe write it on the chalkboard, or you could email this out to students or invite students. But this is the code that they will need in order to get enrolled into your class. All right, having said that, let's look at the students page. And when you click on students, it just gives you a list of the students and it tells you what the students can and can't do. So in this case, students can post and they can comment. If I want to change that, they can only comment on the stream. They can't post to the stream. Or you can say only teacher can post or comment. Now it is also possible to just make these changes for specific students. So if one student is abusing the privileges of, of posting and commenting, you can select the students that are giving you trouble and then you can change their permissions if you would like. All right, also we have some actions here. So I have check marks that I've put in. You can go to actions and you could remove those students. You could mute the students. You can also email those specific students. Now I mentioned you could invite students to your class. This is the button for that. Just click invite and then select students from your school that should be included in your class and they will get an invitation. All right. And then just a final reminder that in your Google Classroom account, anytime you get lost or need to go to a different class or whatever, just look in the upper left corner for this symbol here. When you click it, it will open this panel that gives you access to your home page and also quick links to all of your courses and assignments and then also the settings. So I'm going to click on the home button 
to take me back where I can see all my classes, all the class periods that I have. On this home page, if you need to in the future, you can always go into a class and you can click these three dots in the upper right corner to archive a class that is no longer relevant. Maybe you change up your schedule and you're not teaching the same topics. You can archive the class or just at the end of the year, you can archive the class. You can also rename it. So that's really all you need to know about the teacher version of Google Classroom. But I do want to sign in as a student so that you can see what the experience is like for them. Okay, so I've signed in to the student account, and you can see that I'm already set up in this class. I was already registered for the class, and you can see that there's some upcoming assignments already being sent to me. Now, what if I, as a student, what if I didn't already have this set up? What I would need to do is go up to this plus sign, click plus, enter class code to join, and this is where I would put in the code that I showed you earlier, the code for the class, and this would allow me or a student to join the class. Okay, let's jump into the class and see what it looks like from the student perspective. The student just clicks on Spanish 1 or whatever the name of the class is and it brings up the stream. Here's the assignment that I assigned just a few minutes ago. Here's the announcement and some older things as well. As a student I can go in and make a comment. Why? Because as a teacher I allowed that to be an option. If you don't want that to be an option you can remove that in the teacher account. I can also share ideas with the class if I want to, create a new post, and again, change that if you want to. I have a list of upcoming assignments, okay, due Monday, and then also I can click view all, and it will bring up the entire list of assignments. And if I have more than one class, I can quickly switch between classes. So this is really nice for students as well. It really organizes things for them. Notice that instead of a student's page, there's a classmate's page. So as a student, I can click on classmates and it will list my fellow students. I can sort by first name or last name. And then that same about page that I showed you and I developed as a teacher, I can access that as a student now. And I can go in and I can see the shared folder that I set up earlier. And if you click it, it takes me to my Google Drive and to the Spanish first period folder where my work will be put and where the teacher can assign things to me. Okay, so let's take a look at the assignment that's coming up due on Monday. I'm just going to click on it and here it is. And I didn't provide much instruction for myself here, but notice that I can go in and I can click add to add my submission. So let's say I've, I've looked at what the teacher sent me, I've done the work, I could upload it as a file, I could link to it, or if I did the work in Google Drive, I can just click Google Drive and pull in the paper or the worksheet that I've been working on. And then I can mark this as done. The teacher will get a message that this assignment is done as far as I'm concerned. Or I could leave it as not done. Also, I, as a student in this case, can go in and I can add comments to this project that I'm working on or this assignment. Okay, so I can add things, I can make comments. There's also a create button. Directly from this Google Classroom page, I can go in and start creating a Google document or a presentation or some of these other things. So I could just click create document and it does take a little while. The document's been created and here it is and I could just click on it to start working on the Google Doc. And again, once I'm ready, I click Turn In, and this is sent to the teacher. And now I'm gonna to switch to the teacher view. So switching back to the teacher view, I'm gonna go in and look at my Spanish 1 class. And you'll notice if I scroll down the page a ways, the first assignment that I had already created before this tutorial has one person has done the assignment now. That's the one that I just submitted as a student a few seconds ago. And I can click to open up that document and take a look at the excellent work that has been done. So with what I've shown you here, you should be able to get in and start making your own Google Classroom and get up and running with your students using this Google Classroom tool. I think it's a great one and it makes using Google Drive in the classroom a breeze. It makes going paperless a breeze and it helps students and teachers to organize their work much, much better and more easily. So thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more tutorials about technology for teachers and students.